It's a little hard to believe, but it's been a year since we started a field experiment looking at uh, the interactions between periwinkle snails and cord grass and needle rush. And so today we've been out collecting kind of our final uh, data on this experiment. One of the reasons we did this experiment is because when we go out in these natural marshes, we noticed that there were more snails in the needle rush and cord grass when they were mixed together than when cord grass was by itself. We also noticed that the cord grass grew taller and looked just kind of healthier and bigger and happier when it was growing mixed with needle rush. And that was a little unusual because these plants are known to be competitors with each other. Usually they're duking it out and one of them is doing a lot better than the other. So we did this experiment where we had cages that either had snails or no snails and they started out with just cord grass or a mix of cord grass and needle rush. In all of the cages we planted a little transplant of cord grass and so this was kind of our standardized experimental unit that we could follow through time. And in some of the cages we then used scissors to clip away and remove all of the neighboring plants. And so you can see in cages where there's just the cord grass transplant and no neighbors and no snails that's the happiest transplants that we've got. They have expanded, they've gone from say three or four live shoots to seven or eight, um, and they're, they're looking pretty good. When you have transplants that are surrounded by cordgrass neighbors, so cordgrass transplants, cordgrass neighbors, if there are no snails, they're also doing pretty well. When you add in snails, the snails have a really dramatic negative effect on the cordgrass. So if you look at cages with no snails compared to cages with snails, it's pretty easy to tell the difference over the, the year of the experiment. And really we started seeing these effects after say six or eight months. The core grass was looking pretty chewed up and not so happy when there were a lot of snails present. On the other hand, when the core grass transplants had juncus neighbors or needle rush neighbors, there's not a whole lot of difference whether you have snails or you don't have snails. The transplants aren't doing wonderfully. They're definitely competing a little bit with the needle rush, but um, there's not this drastic negative effect of snails. And so it seems like um, there's this consistent pattern with the, that we see in the natural marshes and that we see in this experiment where cord grass growing with needle rush isn't dramatically negatively affected by the periwinkle snails.